A jury's decision not to convict a Minnesota police officer for the shooting death of a black man was met with anger and outrage. There has always been a systemic problem in the state of Minnesota, and me thinking with my common sense that we would get justice in this case, but nevertheless, it never seems to fail us. Valerie Castile's son, Philando, was shot and killed during a summer, last summer during a traffic stop in Falcon Heights. A jury found Officer Haran Moyanez not guilty on all three counts related to the shooting. Immediately after the verdict, Yanez lost his job. The city of St. Anthony said they're working on a separation agreement with him and he will not be returning to the police force. The verdict sparked protests overnight as groups of people gathered on Interstate 94 near Dale Street in St. Paul. That led to several arrests. Rachel Slavic joins us now from the newsroom. Uh, Rachel, sounds like an emotional night, but overall pretty peaceful. Right, Jen. Last night's protest did not have the violence we saw last summer. In that protest, immediately following the death of Philando Castile, officers and others were hurt by thrown rocks and bottles. This time around, police were quicker to make arrests and move protesters off the freeway. This was the scene as an estimated 1,500 protesters walked onto I-94 around 10:30 last night. They carried signs showing their frustration over the acquittal of Officer Yanez. The crowd continued their demonstration until officers gave three orders to leave around. Night. Officers informed people to move or they would be pushed off the freeway. Most followed direction, but we saw one instance where the crowd did resist. State Patrol reports that 18 people were arrested on the interstate, yet the threat of arrest did not deter demonstrators from showing up. I feel like united we stand, divided we fall. And we need to stand together because this can happen to anybody's family. And this is our lives, you know what I'm saying? And I'm happy that all these people. Every race is out here right now, you know what I'm saying? It's not a race issue, it's a system issue. It's these people's fault. Now, a group of protesters also made their way to the governor's residence, where they stayed there until about 3 this morning. We have not heard of any injuries from last night's demonstration. Glad to hear. Rachel, thank you. People rallied in front of the state capitol last night. Hundreds in attendance showed their frustration in what they hoped would be a different outcome in the trial. At times, anger boiled over through speeches and signs we can't show on TV, a testament to a deep divide that remains. Injustice has been done, right? It's kind right. of like it is. It's an injustice. Don't be running around to about you were surprised by the verdict. And so what you got to do is stop crying. Save your tears because I say what they want to see us. In Falcon Heights, at the scene of that viral traffic stop, there is now a large memorial dedicated to Castile. Not long after the verdict was announced, people showed up and left signs and flowers. They gathered there in joint hands near the sidewalk by the state fairgrounds. Castile's family walked out of the courtroom in tears. His younger sister and mother made emotional statements outside the courthouse. My son loved this city, and this city killed my son, and the murderer gets away. Valerie Castile did not hold back while talking to a crowd in St. Paul. The crowd came to offer support to a mother, grieving the loss of her son and the fight to bring him justice. The shock of hearing not guilty three times is something the family says they cannot describe. What they did tell us is that it shattered their faith in a system that they call broken. The system continues to fail black people, and they will continue to fail you all. Like I said, because this happened with Orlando, when they get done with us, they're coming from you, for you, for you, and all your interracial children. Y'all are next. And I am really just so hurt because y'all took away, he took away something so precious for me. That was my brother, that was my mentor, that was my father figure, that was everything. Castile's girlfriend, Diamond Reynolds, broadcast the immediate aftermath of the shooting live on Facebook. Reynolds testified in court that Castile was reaching for his wallet during that traffic stop in Falcon Heights. Officer Yanez told jurors he saw a gun in Castile's pocket. Reynolds released this statement after the verdict. I am incredibly disappointed with the jury's verdict. He was seatbelted and doing as he was told when he was shot by Officer Yanez, who fired seven shots into the vehicle where my four-year-old daughter and I also sat. It is a sad state of affairs when this type of criminal conduct is condoned simply because Yanez is a policeman. Ramsey County prosecutors and Yanez's attorney also spoke after the verdict. Defense attorney Earl Gray said he thought the jury would return a not guilty verdict sooner. When you're this close to somebody, three feet away, two feet away, and a guy's pulling out a gun and he's not paying attention, 
to your orders. As a law enforcement officer, you have one duty, and that's to save yourself. Uh, I'm sorry that it didn't uh, work out as uh, the Castillo family would have liked, um, but the process, um, we can't control it other than the fact of just doing the best that we can. The defense does the best that they can, and it's a product of uh, that adversarial system. One of the jurors felt compelled to share the pains each of them felt, carefully weighing evidence and testimony during the trial. All of us in the jury, they feel the same way. It's too bad that it had to go to where it went. It would take Dennis Bloussard and the 11 other members of the jury five days to decide the fate of Officer Yanez. Bloussard said two jurors struggled with discrepancies in the officer's initial statements and later testimony, believing Yanez did not see a gun. He said the jury never thought race played a factor. That was one of the first questions I asked on Monday afternoon is, does anybody believe this is racial uh, connected? And we all agreed it wasn't. Lussard says jurors sat with their heads down and in total silence after they were finally discharged, knowing it would please some and anger others. In the end, jurors decided Officer Yanez was not culpably negligent. In other words, he responded just as another reasonable officer would have under the same circumstances. Evidence in the case, including dash cam video of the traffic stop, is expected to be released next week. Stay with WCCO for continuing coverage following the aftermath of the Yanez trial.